Waller ran today and with Stanford football player Matthew Merritt and for locally came out of Buchanan High School. Thanks for joining me today. Yeah, Nathan, thank you for having me. At any time, I'll start with my first question. How old were you when you started playing football? When I started playing football, I was about, I think, a six, six and a half years old, something like that. Um, yeah, six and a half years old. I was, I was living in Reno, Nevada at the time and joined my first uh, tackle football team. I think it was called the, I think we were the Cougars. So um, actually, I didn't, when I was six at the time, I hated football. You know, I was, I was kind of scared of contact and everything. So um, I've come a long way, obviously, but yeah. That's funny. At first, you didn't like the contact to now playing college football. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what made you pick Stanford? Um. Yeah, well, Stanford is obviously a very elite school um, academically and athletically. So um, and I, I value academics very highly and always have. Um, it's kind of how I was raised. My parents always told me that. If I want to do anything, you know, fun or continue to have an enjoyment of enjoy the life, then I would have to get good grades in school. So from a young age, um, I was always taught that grades mattered and uh, B's were not acceptable, always had to get A's. So it was kind of just carved within me. So uh, by the time I've kind of by the time I uh, grew up a little bit, it was in high school. Um, I just this is who I was. I cared about I actually did care about academics and I knew that if uh that football was going to end one day and um I would have to rely on a on a good degree to kind of take me from there so when Stanford came in the picture um it was kind of a no-brainer and um all my other options really just didn't matter at that point because um Stanford just beats every everything else in every other category so yeah yeah because like you said like great academics so for you a lot of you because like you said you care about academics a lot so it helps set you up for your future after football and great football playing at a power five level but most importantly the academics there like exactly. football is like a bonus so you got you know mm -hmm. yeah what was the jump from high school to college like for you man the jump um it was definitely definitely a big one first of all um the speed um, of going from high school to college is uh, a huge change. Um, I remember my very first practice <clears throat> here at Stanford was, it just felt like my head was spinning around and around and I couldn't um, get a grip of what, what the heck was going on. Um, it's like these, it's just, um, you know, you know, as uh, in high school, usually the guys who end up playing college are just guys who are just better than everybody else physically and athletically and in high school, you know? Um, so the game's kind of slower for you be just cause you're just athletically better, I guess. Um, and overall, just the game itself is slower just cause of, you know, the age at the age that um, you're at and um, just the physical capability that high schoolers are able to be. So obviously now you get to college you're going against guys that are as old as 25 years old, um, a little bit better developed, um, a true man, I guess if you want to call yeah. it. Um, so a lot faster, a lot stronger, a lot bigger. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you're, you're freshman, you really your whole freshman year, you're trying to get a grasp uh, and really just trying to be able to adjust to this new speed. Um, and that was something that was definitely difficult to do at first um, because, you know, you're thinking about, man, I got, now I got, you know, five, 300 pound guys in front of me right now. And that, and I got to worry about the running back behind him or the receiver who's going to get the ball, who runs like a sub four, five forty. So it's just, it's just a lot. So um, definitely um, huge jump from high school to college, but I'd say, you know, give everyone some time. It's, it's not hard to adjust to. Um, it just takes time. So. Yeah, so once you get to college, because you're, you're competing against everyone that was, like, the best at their high school, everyone's yeah. gifted, and then not only, like, at your age level, you got guys, it's a big jump, like, bigger, stronger, it's just everything, mm -hmm. it's a lot to take in at first. Yeah, exactly. What's been the biggest game for you while at Stanford? Biggest game for me? Um, Well, 
I have run into a lot of injuries since I've been here. So I have not been able to get on the field as much as I'd like to. Um, however, uh, this, I mean, the last game I was able to play in was UCLA a couple of weeks ago, um, was able to record, uh, my first sack. I didn't get a full sack. I got a half a sack, but you know, still got a first sack in the stat sheet technically. So that was, that was really cool for me. Um, very proud of that. Um, you know, I wish, wish things could have gone differently and, um, was able, I had, I actually, I tore my shoulder two years ago, my labrum, my shoulder two years ago. And then, um, I tore a ligament in my foot last year. So, you know, wish things could have gone differently and could have got on the field a li little bit more. Um, but that's just how things kind of went. So it is, what it is just kind of move on and accept with the cards you're dealt. Right. So, yeah. Um, but you know, just my favorite game in general, since I've been here, um, probably that, uh, Probably two years ago, my sophomore year, when Oregon number number three in the country, I think. I can't remember. They were a top five team, top three team, something like that. I think they're number three. Um, they came to they came to our house and um ended up competing in the whole game and uh ended up going into overtime and catching a uh a, a very nice fade ball to go into overtime, actually, which was uh very electric as time expired. So that was really cool to experience. Um, and yeah, I ended up beating him over time. So that was a very uh, surreal moment. And I'll definitely remember that for, for a long time. So, yeah, I think, I think I actually remember watching that game. So it was like yeah. right after they had beaten or somewhere near when they had beaten Ohio state. So they had a lot of hype. Right. I think. And then I do remember like the, like I, weren't you guys like you were close to scoring for a while. And then I remember like, like you said, like the last play of a couple of plays and then you guys got the touch and send it to overtime and win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Threw a threw a nice little fade ball to Elijah Higgins in the left corner of the end zone. Um, as time expired off the clock, so it was a very cool moment. Yeah, and then like you said, UCLA, you know, that could have go in against a good program. You know, get a sack on the stat sheet and yeah, against a ranked yeah, yeah. team. And so yeah, yeah, it was really cool. So um, yeah, excited that happened. Now that you're a senior, would you say that you're able to help out the younger guys a lot and be a leader? Yeah, hundred percent. So, um, you know, as a senior, I definitely look back and reflect on my time here and can definitely see um, how much I've matured and um, how much I've grown in general. So I've tried my, the, my, obviously, like I said, I haven't played as much as, as I'd like to. So um, my lane that I kind of stay in is just kind of trying to help the younger guys mature quicker and grow a little bit faster to help them get to their uh, full potential, I guess, uh, mentally. Um, obviously, I let some of my other teammates who have played a little bit more than me kind of guide them on the field. But um, yeah, so I, I, I've, I always emphasize, you know, when the young guys get here, studying the playbook. Um, also, too, when freshmen get here, the coaches are pretty hard on you because they want to kind of toughen you up a little bit. And um you know, as a freshman, you go from a high recruit who the coaches are just kind of, you know, sucking up to you a little bit because they want you to commit. And then they finally get here and then, hey, they show their true faces, right? There's, it's just a football coach. They're going to be hard on you. So and then a lot of these a lot of these freshmen, they get they get kind of butthurt and they, they get all upset about it. Like, man, coach doesn't like me. I should transfer. I should just leave. You know, I'm not going to play. I tell them just calm down. Like, look, buddy, you're a freshman. Um, <laughs> you got a lot of growing to do. Uh, coach is just hard on you because he wants to toughen you up and let you know what the standard is here um, and that kind of thing. So I, I've kind of helped uh, the young guys. Just, I just mentor them a little bit, just kind of uh, making sure their their mental is right. Um, yeah, I, I'd say that's that's kind of been how I've handled that with the young guys. So Yeah, so you're able to help them mature like because they don't know what to think of it, like with coach is being harder on them. Cause after, like you said, they got all the sweet stuff, like with the recruiting process, you know, just tell them like hang in there, like, you know, help you. It's just like how it is and at the college football level, but like, you know, keep going through it. Don't just transfer out. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Just got to remind them, got to give it time. You know, I mean, you got to think like the guys that are playing ahead of you are a few years older than you. They, everybody goes through this process. Got to wait your turn. So Yeah. Yeah. And the next question, you kind of talked about it earlier, but I've seen how you've been on the Pac-12 honor roll twice. How important was that to you along with football? Yeah, so um, 
like I said, academics is extremely important to me. Um, and, you know, even, even in college, you know, I just, you know, try to get the, try to be the best I can be and get the best case, but get the best grades I can get. Um, and fortunately, you know, I, I was able to get the back to a honor roll, um, which is cool. So, um, you know, you know, uh, Stanford really helps us out. You know, they, uh, they provide all the tools that we need to be successful in the classroom. And, um, we're extremely fortunate for that. Um, coaches are always, you know, emphasizing, um, taking care of your schoolwork and making sure you're prioritizing your work over practice and make sure you have good time management. So you're getting things done. You can still get to bed at a decent hour and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's important to me, you know, I'm glad I was able to do it, but definitely got to give credit to my university and my support system around me. So, yeah. So it was, you basically, just, you know, you take advantage in a good way of like what they were helping you with and just did your schoolwork. And like you said, mm-hmm. they helped so set you up for success and you didn't just like squander it. You took, you know, you did every part in this that you make sure to have the best grades possible. Exactly. Yeah. What was the environment like in the locker room after the Colorado game? <laughs> yeah, it was a very uh, surreal moment. I mean, it was it was electric. You know, obviously, we were down 29-0 at half. And then to be able to – I mean, the halftime – the locker room at halftime was just um, very weird with mixed emotions. It's just basically, coach is just like, we just got to play better. Like, I've – this, that was just the most embarrassing first half I've ever seen, blah, blah, blah. Um, let's just go out there and play and play better in the second half. Let's just take it one play at a time, just win and beat the guy ahead of you. Um, and that's what the team did in the in the second half, you know. Um, everybody just focused on their guy ahead of them. Every plan just took a play by play. And then before you know it, we're up. Ended up winning the game. Um, yeah, and the locker room was just nuts after. Everyone's just celebrating, partying, you know, music's going off. Everyone's dancing, having a good time um do our do our uh our post dub chant in the locker room so it was a definitely a great moment and one that will be remembered for sure yeah that was really cool like at Colorado and cold and just like you said the comeback and just yeah. a lot of crazy plays made like that catch over Travis Hunter like, oh yeah that was insane so yeah and then obviously when you break um I think it was a school record for largest comeback, and it was a Pac-12 record for large, largest comeback. So obviously, when that kind of stuff happens, it's just a very surreal moment in the locker room. So yeah, big deal that you won't forget. Yeah. What's your favorite Stanford memory? Favorite Stanford memory. Um, hmm. I mean, I always obviously I discussed my favorite Stanford game already. Yeah, it was the Oregon game. Um, but outside of football, um, I think my favorite Stanford memory, uh, probably my freshman year. Um, you know, because of COVID, I was a uh, uh, my senior year and freshman year of college, senior year of high school, freshman year of college was during COVID and the pandemic. So online school and everything, um, didn't get the full social experience and everything, and um visits didn't I wasn't actually able, able to go on my official visit here because um of COVID you know I was I was a late guy so um I guess my favorite memory was when I finally got here as a freshman um and was just able to see the campus um see how how beautiful it was, it was you know Palo Alto is always sunny and clear skies here so I was able to see the campus you know rode my bike around the whole place and just really took it all in of where I was um you know at the time I was just didn't still am now I'm just so grateful I'm here I was able to go to such a prestigious school so you know that first day I was able to step on campus and really just soak it all in it was definitely something I always remember and the the feeling that I felt so yeah yeah so just sucking all in like this is where you go to school, this is where it'll be yeah. for the next four years, and you get to spend time there. Yeah, exactly. Do you plan on using your redshirt ability? Um, I mean, I kind of, I mean, I guess kind of in a way. Um, I obviously COVID year didn't count, and then I redshirted my sophomore year. Um, so technically, I do have two years of eligibility after this season. 
Um, but I do will not be using those. I, like I said, I've been injured a lot since I've been here. Body's taken, taking a little bit of a beating. So um, I think I'm gonna hang up the cleats after this season. Um, just kind of move on and close close the, the chapter of football in my life. So, yeah. Yeah. So kind of just you know don't want to keep getting injured. You know now you know you yeah. had you enjoyed the football whole football career, but now hang them up and you know do what's next for you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, all good things come to an end, right? So, yeah, you know, I wish I could play longer, um, but just kind of how things went here with uh, playing time and, you know, getting injured is just, you know, it's okay. It's okay to move on, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Body, body's had enough. Are you going to stay in Palo Alto or come back down to Fresno? Uh, I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, I will most likely stay in the Bay Area. Um, I could go somewhere else. I guess we'll we'll see. Um, I don't ever plan on moving back to Fresno. Uh, I think I've had, uh, I had my time there. Um, but also too, family will always be there. You know, my girls, fam- my girls' parents live there. My parents live there. Um, so that's always going to be home. That's where family will always be. So I'll always be back, but live there. Probably not. <laughs> yeah. That chapter came to a close as well. Yeah, exactly. How would you describe yourself off the field? Off the field. Um, I'd say off the field, I'm very uh I say I'm a very focused individual. You know, I always I'm always thinking about kind of um my goals and the next things I want to achieve and how can I get that done. Um also I'm a huge social guy, you know. Um I live with seven other dudes. We have a big, big eight man apartment. Um, and I'm always hanging out with them. So uh, I love being around people. I love, you know, trying to be the funny guy with everybody. Um, so yeah, I guess that, that's, I guess that's how it'd be, you know, outside of football. Yeah. So, uh, you know, like people's person, like to hang around, make jokes, get the group to laugh, all that. Yeah, exactly. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to be the, trying to be the guy that just brings everybody together. So especially with, um, you know, my buddies from high school. So I always try to reach out to all of them, get them together. And even though all of us, we haven't seen each other in a long time. So I always try to, be that guy to actually make something happen with the group and everything. So yeah, make keep up the connections. Yeah. Then the last question I was for fun. You get to take any three NFL players to dinner. They could be past or present. Who are you taking? Um, let's see. Well, I'm a Cowboys fan, first of all. <laughs> so I think I'd throw some Cowboys players in there. I think I'm definitely taking Demarcus Ware, one of the best edge rushers of all time. Um, had one of the big, he, I think he was the guy who originally did the fake spin move. Um, so he started that kind of trend. So that was pretty cool. Um, I think I'm doing Des Bryant as well. Another Cowboys guy, you know, legendary wide receiver, number 88 for the, for the boys. Um, and then probably Reggie Bush. I'll probably do Reggie Bush for my last one, even though he was more of a, a college legend than he was NFL legend, but. Reggie, Reggie's probably one of my favorite running backs of all time. So, yeah, Reggie's a legend. My dad went to USC, and so I mean, oh, he yeah. was there before him, but he still like would go to a lot of the games because right after he's in college, and so he talks about him a lot and said how electric he was, like seeing him in person. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that'd be a fun there for sure. Demarcus Ware, Des Bryant, two really good Cowboys players, and then Reggie Bush. Yeah, exactly. As long as they're paying them, because they got all the money. <laughs> yeah. You know, they have those big NFL contracts. Yeah, exactly. All right. Thank you for taking the time to join me today. Yeah, of course, Nathan. I had a great time. Thank you for uh, thank you for having me, bud. Yeah, thank you.